All right, everybody. Hope you're all good. Uh, I've got the gaff to myself tonight again. My wee boys time with his pals. So I thought I would jump on to a wee video. Um, about <clears throat> a guy that I knew from Low Moss Prison in Bishop Briggs. Um, I met him uh, 2012 when he came into my section. So say he was like four doors away from me or whatever. Um, you probably never heard of this guy, but his case is quite notorious, especially in uh, Scotland. Um, he was convicted of sending a hoax explosive to the former Celtic manager, Neil Lennon, and also uh, the lawyer, Paul McBride, who died, was funded in Pakistan. Um, few few years back, um, and also, uh, the Labour MP Trish Godman, and well, former Labour MP, um, who else, and people who were kind of working for a organisation called Cardinal Erin, which means Friends of Ireland, so they're kind of pro Irish republicanism. No. Um, the thing is with the the actual. The device that had been sent to Neil Lennon. I think the only thing missing for it was a detonator. So the the counter terror mob knew that whoever had made this obviously knew a bit about how to put something like this together, which obviously they would now look too too kindly upon. No, um. Don't get me wrong, like, I got on with Neil, but um, obviously a lot of people kind of had animosity towards him because obviously, you know what, uh, Scotland and Glasgow in particular can be like for the Rangers and Celtic, Catholic, Protestant stuff. Um, obviously I'm a Rangers fan, right, but it stops at that. Like, I'm no <laughs> what you got in hot Celtic fans or... Catholics, like I wasn't brought up that um religious in a religious household. Like I had Catholics and Protestants in my family. We didn't go to church. We didn't kind of we weren't involved in that. So, um, but <clears throat> obviously I grew up kind of around a lot of kind of old firm violence. Cause like um, I remember when I was a, a wee boy. My dad and his neighbour, his upstairs neighbour, fighting nearly after every old firm game. Um, uh, so there's always, and it wasn't because my dad was playing like orange music or anything like that. It was just, we just don't know the fact that my dad was a diehard Rangers fan. Like I never heard him playing like the Sash or anything like that. I didn't even really know what that was until I was like my son's age. So. But Neil McKenzie, it was him and his, 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 his pal, right? They got five years each, I think, right? Which, um, obviously because he hadn't had any previous convictions or anything like that, maybe that's why his sentence was at the lower end of the scale as opposed to the, the higher end. Because... If you have a if you have any sort of previous convictions for a certain offence, and imagine it's like this in a lot of other countries, your sen your sentences tend to go higher. So like if you had been done by a kinda similar offence before, if you go back to court for the same kind of thing, then your sentence is gonna be significantly significantly increased, right? So um I remember, like, because I, I used to, I, I'm not going to lie, right, I used to talk to him a lot because he would always kind of, he always saw me reading mad books and um, I remember him um, talking to me about, like, all different subjects. Now, I don't care who you are in prison, it's so long as you're not, like, a beast. See if you can, uh, 
or into like if you have a wit I don't care even if I don't like the subject you know hundreds of stuff about I could listen to you talk about it all day because you're showing an interest in something you're showing a level of intelligence that that isn't centered on selling drugs robbing stuff or whatever obviously like I've heard a lot of these conversations but after a while you kind of switch off to it like it's not really that interesting anymore do you know what I mean like um so if somebody's kind of coming along who knows a lot about uh, like chemistry maths an obscure subject like I don't know Etna at all like I'm just like wow man like keep talking because I'm learning as well so um every day is a school day as they say you know so um I remember um he got a job in the where was it? The reception. And um like so that's quite a trusted job. Um I don't know if they've done that, maybe they keep an eye on them, see like that, keep your friends close and all that shit. Do you know what I mean? But um or maybe it was just because of the fact it was his first offence. But um I do remember he would like so we were watching this film. It, when we were kind of talking about it after it and it was in education obviously so it's like uh, talking about like what kind of perspectives you have on it not like I remember one was Schindler's List and then we started talking about a film called The Wind That Shakes the Barley right <laughs> and I remember <laughs> he done that and the teacher was from Northern Ireland too the teacher was from the, uh, what's that road Shank 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 Hall, Shank or Shank something road, right? The Royal the Royalist bit. So she's fair there, right? And um but she never ever spoke about it like that, obviously, right? And um I remember <laughs> we were talking about that film Wind That Shakes a Barley, which was about the Irish War of Independence, if any's ever seen it. And um he's like, Fucking I are a propaganda and I I just I just laughed because I thought like <laughs> you're showing it, man. But um a lot of kind of, there's obviously people that were kind of, they, they thought he came across as kind of, you look down their nose at them. Um, I didn't get that impression of him, but I did get the impression he liked to kind of demonstrate his knowledge of something, which is fair enough, do you know what I mean? But it's obviously you need to be careful in prison because, um, you can get somebody who comes across as like dead up their own arse because they're they're quite intelligent and all that and um I remember one time there was this guy who was like that and long story short ended up getting his ear but clean off like I seen him after it was like that that half it was just ripped clean off, right? You could still see the teeth marks. Um, I think he was a bit in shock for a couple of days, but after that, he just went back to his normal kind of cells, you know what I mean? But pff, you can't be walking about. You need to try and be mind, adapt to other people's kind of... Well, I just think that's my... Do you know what I mean? I'm not going to sit and talk about something I know everything about and try and show off how knowledgeable I'm or if somebody's not got a clue what I'm talking about and then can I scoff at them for no knowing it about it, do you know what I mean? But um uh, I remember an alright so I was in education one day and um the teacher who the from Northern Ireland that I'm talking about um she was got a photocopy something for me because um I was always fucking getting paperwork, books, all that shit to to, to look her in my cell and all that and the classroom door was shut so we me and her were standing a good couple of feet away right and then I done we were standing there we were just standing there and I done that shh and she's like what I done that. somebody's fighting because see when there's a fight in the jail see if you're near that room it's like a cartoon bang crash wallops you all that kind of shit but it wasn't as loud as that it was just like a vibration in the air I felt right and I done that shh somebody's fighting she's like I, I don't hear nothing and then we go to the classroom door and this boy's bounced up and punched 
we didn't see that happening, but, but it turned out after that's what happened. This boy uh, punched that Neil, and by the time we got to the classroom, Neil's had him in a fucking headlock. And obviously, all the screws have all hurt the bell, and as you do, and they've ran and separated and blah, blah, blah. Um, and she was like, how the fuck? The teacher was like, how the fuck did you know they were fighting? As if she thought I knew that was going to happen before, but I didn't know, um, because this boy um, was on another bit of the jail for me, and um, I doubt he's going to tell me that he's going to do that. You don't really tell somebody you're going to do that, especially if you're not really that close with them. You would only maybe tell somebody like you like that way, do you know what I mean? Just to kind of watch, keep keep you edgy in case fucking somebody that's pals with him tries to jump on you back, you know what I mean? But, um, Aye, so he ended up, um, he got, I think eventually he went to, I don't know if he went to the open or he got parole, right? But after he left, right, so <laughs> he, drew, he drew me this fucking, this diagram, right? And it was like a radio, it was like a, how to detonate a radio signal, you know what? When you hook the mobile phone up to and you phone it, both know what I'm talking about. And it wasn't for any other reason other to show me, like, he knew what he was talking about. But I kept it, I kept the diagram, didn't I? And I folded it up and kept it inside a book, right? Because my cell was full of books, so <laughs> I didn't think MD's got to find that. And um, one day I got a cell search, right? and fucking the the screws are writing through my books, right? And sometimes you'll get a jail where the cell searches are a bit less robust, shall we say, than other jails, right? Like, I, rem I remember being in one jail and they would just come in and pure look about and look at all the books and not and be like, fucking hell, you're reading this shit, no? And I would just laugh. Because they knew I wouldn't have it uh, to look for anyway. They I think they kind of sometimes they'll look they'll know, like, who's up to what, but I kept this bit of paper, it was A4 paper, folded up as if it was a bookmarker, and I thought, nobody's ever going to look at that, nobody's ever even going to find that, and um, the screws down the cell search, fucking, <sighs> see, because it was a drawing of two mobile phones and all that, with wires coming out and all that, right, and, one of the screws that found it, right? They were going through all the books, like, see fucking, see like this, look. You know that, right? And then they've spotted it, and they've opened it up and looked at it, right? And one of them done that. Is that, a, is that how to fix a mobile phone? And I was just about to say aye, because it was better than saying what it really was, right? And the other screw done that, he's an ex-squad, and it goes, no, look, the power source is coming out the way. I was like, I swear to God, man. I was like, shit. Because that little moss, right, when I, I went there when it first opened, and compared to the security in other jails, right, obviously I've been in all these secure jails, but I mean, screws in there were just very, how do I put it? just constantly on the fucking ball, man. Um, so, get put back in my cell, didn't I? And I'm just waiting on it, man. I'm like, oh, no. Because, <laughs> obviously, I'm thinking they're going to fucking civvy charge me or something. I, I didn't know, because like, I've never I've never been involved in it like that. Um, and... I can't mind if it was the same day, right, or the next day. So I'm stoning in my cell, right, and um, this screw, the one that I called Tom Selleck, man, he's walked in, right, but I was stoning with my back to the door and I was staring at my, my telly, right, and he's like, you're on a rule, like, which means is you're getting locked up in your cell 23 hours a day until we investigate how you got this. They brought sniffer dogs in my cell and... 
um, I think that was the first time I'd ever seen a sniffer dog in a, in my set like I like when I'd been in shorts, Glen Oco, all these other jails. I they've got they've got the dogs, the canine units, but you never really see seen them unless like something really was happening. They were looking for a blade or they were looking for a phone or whatever or drugs maybe. But I never really seen them and then seen low moss. They had them out in the route and they had them fucking you would be walking up education, they'd be stoning at the dogs. Like sometimes I used to like fucking shout, Where's my boy? and you know, all that just to annoy the screws, but it was just a laugh, not them. Um but fucking he's come in and told me we're uh, we're ruling you up until we can do an investigation and see what you were planning with us not and I was like fucking hell. Um but I, I was I've still got see the bit of paper that I got after screws detailing what it like was found in possession of a explosive diagram, um blah blah blah. I've still got the bit of paper, I've been hunting for it all day, taking a just to show it and just not a meme. But um can I fucking find it? My house is just full of books and research papers and you can't you fucking don't know your arse for your elbow. But anyway, uh so cut a long story short, they they come in to speak to us not and they're going, uh where did you get it not? And I'm just sitting, I know they know where I got it, but I done not look at it. It's no my horn right and I just kept saying that. That was probably the saving grace because normally I would like if I was ever doing it like that, I would have copied it out in my own horn writing so that I know the other individuals safe, do you know what I mean? But he was already fucking somewhere else, but then he either got parole or he got up to Castle Huntley, which is like the open prison, like there's no fence in it. You can walk out if you want and fucking get somebody to pick you up, but police are all looking for you, you know what I mean? You could just fuck off. But um, I just kept saying, ah, I've known my horn right, known my horn right, and I found it and all that. But oh, what man, that was a fucking blunder, man. No, my proudest moment. There it was. Um, I ended up seeing him in the Daily Record because he's got a lifetime ban for Ibrox, at Neil Wright, and fucking he snuck in and took photos of his cell sitting in one of the stands. But um, so. Aye, but kind of cat and mouse, do you know what I mean? But fucking hell, that, see when I think back to that, I'm like, that was a major fucking, that was a cluster fuck, man. And I always wonder, what if I did have that in my own horn writing, would, would that have like, do you know what I mean? Because it, it, whatever way you want to look at it, right, that's got to be in, see your security file, your intelligence file. Um. It's like the bit of the jail that ga gather all the kind of information on you, like people maybe informing on you or talking about you or telling them what you're saying. Like say one day you said you wanted to do a screw and somebody goes and tells them, so that would go in your intelligence file. Um, so that that will always be there, do you know what I mean? And fucking hell, like... And I'm like, I'm just interested. I was playing the academic card, like, but I have no chemistry background, do you know what I mean? So... Aye, that was a bit of a fucking, that was a bit of a sticky time, but um, I just wanted to come on and uh, talk about that because like, um, I know last night I'd spoke about um, like prison rehabilitation and all that, so I thought I would come on and talk about my kind of, it's not, it's not, it's kind of funny, but I was, I'm not going to lie, I was not laughing at the time, right, I was not laughing at the time, man. <laughs> fuck I think I'm just lucky that I can laugh about it now this was like 2012 so that's that was a long time ago 2013 that's a long time ago do you know what I mean so um hope you're all having a good night and take care see you next time